don't have individuals that are eligible, it's not going to do you any good. So does nothing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, oftentimes exactly. the recommendation, expectation of the board and the board uh, president that makes the recommendation ultimately to the board are going to look at the things that they say are necessary for that organization. So seen this on so many different levels. Um, I've seen it here at Texas Southern University where you think direction is going one way. The board ultimately makes a different decision uh, based on the information they need working with the president uh, in that manner. So it's fascinating to see these kind of things. Let me go back to you, Charles, to see what other news of the day that you want to share. Yeah, well, let's take a look at this. And this comes to us from uh, UAP, UAPB Athletics for a football game between Arkansas Pine Bluff and Alabama a and will be played at Simmons Bank Field in Pine Bluff on Sunday at 3 p.m. Director of Athletics Chris Robinson said based on the unfulfilled contractual obligations by the organizers of the St. Louis Classic, both schools were left with serious uncertainty about the game's venue, transportation, house, and accommodations, and whether uh, the agreed-upon expenses would be covered. So, uh, smart move. Um, uh, the ADs, uh, I guess, huddled on this and decided to make sure that this game is uh, taking place in Pine Bluff. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, the residents of St. Louis will not get the uh, – the River City Classic, but uh, the game it will go for it. Yeah, that, that having that upfront capital is important when you're trying to put together these classics. The thing that was beneficial about this that this was a conference game. Um, and essentially, the game was in Huntsville, if you would, last year at the home of Alabama A&M. Um, and so, obviously, this year the game was scheduled to be in Pine Bluff. And so, once they saw that the uh, financial obligations were not going to be met, they quickly said, all right, we're just going to play it at home. Um, so give some love to the fans. Hopefully it wasn't too many people that bought tickets and things of that nature, and it works out for them if they did. Lodging and travel plans seem like they cut it off long enough where a lot of folks can cancel those things, at least with hotels, rental cars. Uh, airline tickets may be a little different uh, unless you have some of those long-standing miles where you could be able to get it back. Uh, but that would be troubling in that case. But as – Interesting, fascinating when things go on. Before we take this quick break, I did want to get in here. Another one, Jack State. This one is for individual players. Shador Sanders signs with Brady. Yeah, that that Brady, the professional yeah. quarterback. Yep. Uh, Tom Brady has his own trademark line. And, quote, I'm so excited to work with Brady team, end quote. Tom Brady's namesake, Pearl Brandy. Uh, brand is Brady. He's proud to announce his partnership with the star athlete, Shador Sanders quarterback for his historic Jackson State University Tigers, Brandy uh, Brady, continues to partner with top athletes who represent the next generation's spot. I understand this is the first in a collegiate type of athletics. He's quoted as saying Shador Sanders is the perfect ambassador for Brady, says co founder Tom Brady. He embodies everything we look for in a Brady athlete, and his, char his character values align perfectly with all. Not only is he a central football player and a quarterback, but he is one of the most influential players of his generation, and we're thrilled that he is officially joining the Brady family. Then you had RG3 tweeted out today, his top five for Heisman. Guess who was on the list? <laughs> he did. He Shador did. Yes, he did. Five yeah. On that list. So <laughs> shout out to Robert Griffin III, said representing HBCU. So shout out to Shador Sanders. He's put in a lot of work. Uh, he's done it freshman, now sophomore year. Um, and getting some accolades. And in terms of the NIL, he's actually having his presence out there, as some people would say, in terms of some of these other folks getting NILs that not necessarily mark the brand. So that's pretty positive. Let's get into our first break. We're going to come back on the other side in the second quarter. We're going to get into the rankings. We're going to get into brand, the band, marching sport rankings. I got some new tricks up here for you. A little more colorful and see what you think when we come up with it. This, this will be right interesting. Right back after the fourth quarter break, we're going to get into top 10 matchups. We had two teams, uh, two sporting uh, matches, I said, if you would, four bands, teams that went head-to-head -head in the top five. We'll see mm. what kind of changes. Uh, just on the other side, stick with us because this should be fun. This should be interesting. I know one. <laughs> Q Time is a classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time way. 
1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q Time, an Urban Passport member. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach us. This is Dr. Bill in Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. We're getting into the marching sport. Just to make sure that everybody's clear here, because some of y'all forget. This is not a voting poll in terms of popularity. This is not to see how many fans you can get out there and you love your band like you're supposed to all the time. You don't care how good, bad they are, who's the PA announcer, whether they travel or not. Oh, that doesn't work in this poll. This is about competition, meaning that you have to travel. Uh, you have to host another team, and there has to be a matchup, which means there's going to be a winner and a loser. So that's what we have in the poll, poll ranking today. We're going to go with the top 10. Let's get into this top 10 today uh, in regards to these teams here. I'll let you know my thoughts in terms of it. I'll give you a little bit about those that dropped out in terms of what that looks like. Let me see if I can get in here a little bit more about these uh, poll rankings. Ooh. Dropping out, we didn't have any, so not a lot of movement there. Receiving votes was Texas Southern, Ocean of Soul. They're 0-2, but it tells you about those tough matchups, so they still got some votes in there. They had a tough one against Prairie View that's uh, in the top 10, and they had another tough one with Southern that's also in the top 10. We'll see where those two teams are. They continue to get it done in a lot of ways. Ever Waters, representing for the mid-majors, marching band, 1-0, uh, 3-2 this season. I want to give a shout out to Miles a little bit. They're not in here, but we do have Albany that defeated Miles in the last band uh, in terms of the Rand Show Band that improved to uh, two and three on the season. Let's get into the top 10. Number 10, as we continue to move forward, is North Carolina a &T. Blue and gold marching machine, uh, one and one on the season. Uh, they stay at number 10 with eight points. Let's get into number nine. And number nine, you have none other than Tennessee State Aristocrats of Bands. Uh, they are 0-1 on the season. Uh, they at number nine. They've had a good season, good tough matchup with Jackson State earlier this season, the Southern Heritage Classic. Um, they didn't really get a chance to get a matchup with Lane, which would have been fascinating to see what happened. Maybe they would have got a little backup from last year when they lost the upset to Kentucky State. Um, then Bethune-Cookman, with everything going on, um, is my understanding they originally weren't going to make the trip, but they didn't make it after that. So we'll see how long Tennessee State can stay in this. They don't have any other HBCU matchups to get in a conference race, so we'll see what that means. You got to participate. Uh, it is what it is. Let's get into number eight, since that is the case, and continue to move forward with it. Florida a and March 100. They're one and one on the season, 0 and one. They took in March with North Carolina uh, in terms of that. So they took a little bit of the culture with them. So that almost almost should have been a loss because now you got folks getting up there talking about gee-ho and gee-ho and 
uh, just robbing folks of the culture. So I almost mm-hmm. want to punish them for that. But they had 27 <laughs> points or seven. Yeah. They're not marching. They don't go anywhere. They take a lot of trips and they do a lot of things with Atlanta. So they're a big band that gets it done. But in terms of matchups, that's just not what they're in. We'll see if they can recover from that. They need to make sure they support the football team and certainly in basketball season. Get in the gym. Support your teams. I know you're a big brand. You got your own thing going on. But part of this is about understanding the nature of supporting your team, particularly a team that's pretty good in the top ten. Let's get into number seven. At number seven, we have none other than Bethune could have been watching that. Two and oh, uh, they fell a little bit. They fell three spots from number four, 29 points. They tend to have some matchups in trouble a little bit, but we don't know how the storm is going to affect them. So we'll see what that means as they drop. Um, we're not participating, but they're at 2-0, and so let you know just how excellent they are. Let's get into number six, which is the last of the first five teams in the top ten, none other than six, Alcorn State, the Sounds of Dynamite, a marching band. They proved the 2-2. Two two. They got a big victory a couple of weeks ago in terms of what they're doing, and they've been having some matchups regionally. It worked out, obviously, uh, getting it done against Mississippi Valley. They are 41 points, and they move up two spots from number eight. So they continue to play, and they continue to get it done. You'd imagine they're going to go down to Southern, so it's a big-time matchup this week. Yeah. It sets up for another top ten matchup. So yep. kudos to the Sounds of Dynamite and making sure they get the band out there, getting it done, get some teams at home, and they're getting on the road traveling. Keep it up uh, as we get into top five. What does the top five look like as we figure out the rest of the top five? I told you some matchups and changes. Let's get into number five. At number five, <coughs> we get into North Carolina Central Sound Machine Marching Band. Two and on on season. They move up one spot in terms of what's going on there. It's interesting to see how many of the uh, games in the MEAC they'll be able to perform and get those matchups because not a lot of the bands travel. So they're going to have to do some themselves. They're in the number five, and they get the bump up based on what some of the teams did last year. But can they hold it based on the performance? Very solid band representing for the MEAC. Let's continue to go to number four. At number four, we have Prairie View A&M, the Marching Storm. Three and one on the season, took their first loss of the season. At home, they match up to Southern. Mike was talking about those multiple L's. Well, you see what that talks about. You can go <laughs> check them out on 1876 Sports and Culture to get a little more insight in that. They fall two spots after the loss to Southern. 73, 73 points total. They continue to get it done, but they're falling. They better get in some matchups, and they better get some wins. Bring us to number three. What do we have at number three? Jackson State, the Sonic Boom of the South. Uh, they take their first loss of the seat. Uh, the seat <laughs> <of> they <laughs> up to Alabama State. Football team dragged everybody around there. Coach got it done. I am swack. Well, the Sonic Boom couldn't get it done for homecoming. Just two much love, too much to overcome. Alabama State has narrowly been shocking some people. They almost put down fam. You not to be last year. They tried to get it done on the road to the Sonic Boom of the South, not to be, but this time a road loss. Early in the season, drops down from number one to the Sonic Boom of the South or at number three. Bring us to number two. Charles can't even hold his face. He's so <laughs> trying to understand what Bring us to number two. Alabama State marching Hornets, they improve. They move up three spots. They are undefeated on the season 3-0, 1-0. It's the Honeybees. It's the Honeybees. Shout out to marching sport. The Honeybees find a way to get it done. They continue to represent and showed up and showed out. Get it done. Bringing us to number one. Who is the new number one this week? After Jackson State reigns supreme for a couple of weeks, it's none other than the Southern Human Jukebox. They go on the road. They're undefeated continue to be undefeated. They take out a top five team. So move up two spots for number three. They're 3-0, and 2-0 oh, oh, with uh, five first place votes, 77 points. Your new number one in the poll ranking is another than Southern in the jukebox. I'm going to save you the misery, Charles. I'm not going to mm. let you go first. So your <laughs> I'm going to make you hold it just a little bit. Mike, what are your thoughts on the top team? You know what? For the first time, I have no problem with this poll. <laughs> From number one to number two, the honeybees are getting it done at Alabama State. Uh, number three, I agree, Jackson State. Yes, they take they take a ride down in the polls. So I have nothing 
uh, to say about this poll whatsoever. I saw Southern play. I saw Bethune. Bethune actually, for a band of size, looked pretty good, but I have nothing to say. I think this poll is on. My man. That's my man. That's my homecoming. That's my dude. He knows what he's talking about. He can keep the mic on. He gets to talk <laughs> as much as he wants. That's what I'm talking about. Mike, I got you. Cigar, uh, White Hennessy, you know what I'm saying? I got your back, man. Whatever you need. No more jokes about you on assignment. You brought back your your, your paperwork. So your check is in the mail, bro. We are going to make sure you get all your money for your reimbursement. You did well. You did well. Charles, let's see if you're going to keep your money. Well, I, I, I'll say this. Even if I'm willing to, <laughs> even if I'm, you know I'll say this, you know it's coming. Even if I'm willing to concede the halftime show, honeybees, they do their thing. Uh, uh, God bless them, they do a hell of a job. But that fifth quarter with Jackson State, Alabama State, wasn't even close. Hey, golly, if you talk about you know energy personified there at the end of the game. The boom took out took out Alabama State there at the end. So I, I can I might concede the halftime show, but. That zero and fifth quarter, no. Nah. But, you know, and, and Mike, you see what I'm talking about now with Southern. They bring energy, zero quarter, halftime. Yes. They, they are that one band that gets into it during the course of the game. Yes. You know, where they are that they are that 12th man. They, they check the boxes as far as all the elements, and then they still have some left over for you for fifth yeah. quarter. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I give it to the jukebox. They, they check the boxes on all the elements. Oh, yeah. If I could get my bands to be that that 12th man, to give the team that energy, to not play a random cadence when the offense is backed up in their own uh, territory, check the boxes, folks. It's yeah. hard. If, if I can get – if I can get – if I could get Prairie View to not go fight at a bumblebee when we need something upbeat, <laughs> that's, I mean, it says Southern check the boxes, man. They they know how to play to the crowd. They know how to put energy into the game, and they did it. They checked the boxes. You all just broke it down. I, I mean, I need to record this. Oh, it is being recorded. It's going to go everywhere so people get a better understanding. You're exactly right in terms of coming in, and it's different when Jackson State is at home Yep, because they have the way they march in. So it's, it's hard for them to lose at home the zero court. And they're solid in terms of the halftime. But on the road, you got to take it to another level. They mm. got the fifth quarter, but that zero quarter was questionable. I had to give it to the Hornets. Halftime, mm. you had to give it to the Hornets a little more mm. energy. And then mm -hmm. the inability to push up to the team. And this was the perfect game where you needed the solid boom of the South to support the team. I uh, need you in it on third down. Most people thought about, yeah, yeah, like you said, random songs when your quarterback has it and you're trying to win the game. You you get the L with that. You got to support yeah. your team. And perfectly, Prairie View coming in there, you know, it had a little bit of something. Started early and they're pretty much in it. But you knew who brought it. Halftime they did. But what really was the impactful, not just getting the lights turned off on them in terms of the fifth quarter, they won that. But the fact when Southern made the score in the third quarter, their yep. ability to almost magnify that score. There it is. Everybody up, the fans up, their teams up, was utterly what you talk about in terms of marching sport and how you do that. That's why I'm so tough on FAMU. You're a great band. But if yep. you're not supporting your team at a football game, that's an F. That's a zero. You get an F squared. You're not doing anything. People love the bands, but if you're not in coordination, it's good. And FAMU has a great game day atmosphere when you bring in the DJ, but it has to be all coordinated. Nobody is more important than the other piece. Football team, not more important than the band. The band is not more important than the team. It has to be in coordination. And that's one thing that Southern has going for them. They got it right. So it's going to be tough Hands down. to knock them out at number one spot if they keep doing it. And they travel to support that team, and they tend to bring home more. They, they get on the road. Yeah, yeah. They get on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With if, you, that if, you had, said, if you had a tail, if you had a tailgate ranking, they'd be number one in that category, too. Uh, I got to stop you there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's not go that far. <laughs> I ain't conceding a tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk about yeah, that. That's another show. About tailgating. Let's get into this second break, get into the marching sport halftime. We'll be back on the other side after these commercials. 
and we'll get into the third quarter. Well, we actually get into the games of the week. Obviously, the game is about to start. We'll get you some updates on that. We'll talk about the mid-major matchups, and we got two top ten matchups. So make sure you listen in and get that in there. And then we're going to get into the fourth quarter where we talked about the major division. Stick with us right after this break. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational powerhouse intelligent and sincere that's the voice you need for your creative marketing process k-e-a-v-e-r-s-v-o-i-c-e.com covers voice covers voice covers voice.com always on all the time Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got a Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab. Mike Washington, as we get in this a little bit, remind the folks that you're a connoisseur of the tailgate spot, and people don't understand it. Tell us some of the reasons when you talk about what it me- what it means to have a top tailgate. Man, when you have a tailgate, and I've traveled all over. I, I actually did my MBA on tailgating, the tailgating business, and and RV Dr. Cavill had a chance to review it. So it when good. you travel, it it's good. more it's more than just showing up for your homecoming event. It's how often you show up on the road. That can be impactful. And I'll throw an example. Southern showed up. They showed up two days before the game on PV's yard, took up most of the tailgating spots, had creative tailgating slots. That just set the tone. When you pulled up on the yard, you didn't see Prairie View flags. You saw Southern tailgate. It's about the food that's characteristic of your particular region, school, tailgating. Are you known for this? Are you known for this? How do you travel on the road consistently, not just to the uh, classics, not just to the homecomings? How dedicated is your fan base as well? Do you have a group of what I call, what I call, let, let me finish, let me finish, creative tailgating setup. Don't just show up with a pickup truck and an ice chest. Uh, we, are you showing up with something elaborate? Are you showing up with RVs, with multiple TVs? The, and do you put that stuff on the road? The other thing is, how far on the road do you extend? Southern traveled as far as FAMU. They've traveled as far as this place. I, I got to rank them as one. I, Jackson State is up there. Jackson State is up there. I'll give it. I'll, I'll give it to you. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> but there, there, there's so much criteria that goes into calling a school a good tailgating university. It involves the alumni. It involves the students. It involves all of the fans of that university. You have fans of certain schools that didn't even attend there that participate in the tailgate. So I, I put together all this criteria when I was writing this paper 
and I looked at some of the most effective schools when it came to tailgating. You and right and now, my data to points. you historically, right? I can talk all day because this was a paper I wrote. All right, right let down me my... let Charles jump in. Here. He's jumping at the bits. We what Jackson State did. We asked like challenge a couple of years ago. Obviously, the last year was Rachel Bowl, and their attendance numbers certainly speak to that. We just I... saw what happened at Monday. Uh, but we'll see what happens in Houston too. So Mike will get a chance to see that up. We hadn't uh, seen Jack State in Prairie View in a while. But yeah. absolutely, go ahead, Charles. I, I Talk mean, a that's, bit about the, that. that's the point that I'm going to make. I mean, Alabama State just set a new uh, attendance record. Uh, when we were pulling in, I, 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 all I saw was Jackson State flags all over the place with regards to, <laughs> to with regards to taking over spot. The Love Association had a whole spot in somebody else's homecoming. So, you know, I, I'm just starting to take a look at it like, and then you you saw it last year, Swag Championship. Yes, you saw I how did. we get you saw how we got. I saw it. So I, I, I'm not I'm not concerned. But but that was but that, that was a whole game. game. I'm that's a hey, whole game. Oh, the road, calls, that is, that is, Wait till we go to all that, corn. Wait till we go to all corn. I wanna I'm see you on the that. I wanna see you on the road. Like so, I saw Southern on the road. It's one state over. They supposed to be on the road. Let's see if you pull it off somewhere else. I'll tell you this. Wait until I bring up the whole ranking for tailgating. Jackson State, just a little hit hit. You probably be excited, Charles. With that being said, let's get back into what we're supposed to be in this thing. Mid major division, and this is a, a excellent matchup. It's top 10. CIAA game of the week. Bowie State Bulldogs. Bowie, Maryland. Breast Cancer Awareness. CIAA, it is the Northern Division up for grabs. Number one. Virginia Union Panthers, 6 0, 4 0, top 25. Yeah, Bowie State, top 25 team previously. You know what they've done. They changed out coaches, coordinator, but they still found a way to get a big time win. State, which is a top 10 matchup. They come in at 4 2, 3 and 1. This is a big one. I'm excited about this matchup. Charles, tell me, what do you think about this? Yeah, I was ready to uh, hand over to Noah uh, to uh, somebody else. Uh, Last week, just thinking that Bowie was not, you know, uh, in their their normal Bowie-ness, if you will. But a uh, big win last week over Virginia State. And, and now they have Virginia Union coming to them. Uh, this is a tough one. I mean, when you take a look at it, uh, both are in the uh, upper tier in terms of uh, uh, rankings within the uh, CIAA. Uh, normally, I tend to shade to the home team on games like this. But I think Virginia Union is something different this year. Uh, you talk about some of the pieces they have on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Be going on, I believe it's on this um, one that I'm wishing was on the Spire Network. They got another CIAA game, but this is one I'm going to find a way to follow. Go ahead, Mike. What are your thoughts in this matchup? Yeah, I, I agree. This is this is a tough matchup because I wasn't one to really to count Bowie State out, and they bounced back with this last victory. You look at who's number one and number. Number one in offense and defense, it's Virginia Union. So I, this is a tough. No, and then you have Bowie State, number three in offense. They're they're both, uh, but you got to look at Virginia Union, 50, 50 per game, uh, averaging Bowie State just thirty. So you got to look at offensive output. Three of their leaders in the top in terms of offensive output. So I know it's in Bowie State, but I look for Virginia to pull this one out. Oh, that's that's yeah, Bowie. Bowie State has a national ranked defense too. So yes, they do have a national ranked defense. They got a quarterback that's sneaky good as well. It's going to be yeah. fascinating to see what goes on. But let's go to the other one, the SIC matchup. It has a top five matchup with number two Benedict Tigers six and zero. Surprised a lot of folks, not anymore. Uh, as they go on the road, the number four Albany State Golden Rams are the four and one three and zero. Albany State's only losses on the road to FAMU. That's the top five team in most major division uh, programs. All, both of these teams are ranked top 25 in region markets. It's in Albany, Georgia, Albany State, Coliseum, SIC East Division matchup at 1 o'clock. Uh, the other game is at a 12 o'clock, so it's fascinating here. Sticking with you, Mike, what are your thoughts in terms of this Benedict and Albany in terms of this matchup? Woo! I, I think it's gonna get hot down there in Albany. Uh, let 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 the low let the low country bulls start up. Um, I, I 
Um, I think Benedict coming in as the top ranked offense in they're they're obviously undefeated. They have been stopped. Um, but you're going down to all Alban- the who has the number two defense. Um, so I look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a possible upset in this one. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna step out so on the limb. You say upset, are you talking about upset with the team that's ranked number four? Yeah, I got you got you. let me go to you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this SI? Yes, I said it. I said it. Uh, this yes. is a beautiful thing in terms of these matchups. What do you think in terms of these top five teams? Well, you know, it, it's tough because uh, it's, to me, this matchup kind of mimics uh, Alcorn and Southern. When you remember, Alcorn had that mastery over Southern for I don't know how many years uh, in terms of winning the big one when they needed to have the big one uh, until last year, uh, Southern was able to break that hex. Same thing with Albany and Benedict. Uh, Albany has won eight of their last nine meetings with Benedict, but I think this is sort of a, a special season for Benedict. I'm with Mike. I'm going to call the upset on this one. I think they will go into Albany and get the W, the fighting tennis berries. Do it again another week. Yep. Ooh, that's it. This game is uh, going to be on HBCU League Pass Plus. Uh, BCSN will be doing the production side of this. So uh, we got a little piece of it. So tune in to make sure you can see this matchup. We will have it for you and give you the breakdown on Sunday to let you know. Let's get into our last break. We will also have it on BCSN as well. So you can tune on and check us out. So you'll be able to get it either way, streaming wise on your phone if you need it. But you can also get it with us in terms of streaming on the BCSN network. So excited about being able to give you this top five matchup, put a lot of work and effort to get it done. So make sure you tune in. Get those numbers up. It's the big one. With that, we'll oh, get man. Into hold on, hold, hold up, Doc. Doc, I got to call one of our listeners out. Lennon Flo, he going to call me out. He said, Mike is on here tonight. Break out the new silverware. We have a guest. I ain't going to call you <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, Lennon, I see how we doing it. <laughs> I see how we doing it. Good one, little, good one. Tell it, tell it. With that, we'll be right back after this break. Stick with us. We'll come back on the other side with the major division. We're going to tell you a little tease, something about the Celebration Bowl, uh, about what these major division teams are looking at, because we're going to talk about the MEAC and SWAC in terms of those matchups. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. So, so. Shop Melvin Online Women's Boutique to spice up your closet with trendy, unique looks. We have fashionable and chic looks at very affordable prices. Melvin Boutique offers free shipping all year long on all orders. Shop online at www.melvetboutique.com. That's www.melvetboutique.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Shop Melvin Online Women's Boutique. Analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. With you guys ranked eighth now in the country, and you, you talked about how you did, wouldn't want to go to the playoffs if it wasn't going to be financially good for Jackson State. Right. If it changes to where you guys could have some home games and it would be financially more to go do the playoff, would you rather go do that? Uh, I'd rather, if we have the opportunity, I'd rather play in a celebration ball. I'd rather do that. In Atlanta, at the celebration ball. MEAC versus SWAC. Champion versus champion. Only one team will rise above the rest and claim the coveted Celebration Bowl trophy. Come join the celebration at Mercedes Benz Stadium this December. We haven't missed the one. We've been in Atlanta. Shout out to John Grant Celebration Bowl. MEAC champion versus SWAC champion. Coach Prime. 
the guy keeps asking, he tell you, he said, if we if we had ability, we had an opportunity, he wants to be in the celebration bowl. I'd rather be in the celebration bowl. I thought that was a perfect answer. With that being said, this game is going on now, so we'll sneak in there and get it up there and get your thoughts on it before it gets too far away one way or the other. Durham, North Carolina, O'K- O'Kelly, Riddick Stadium, I should say, MEAC, Thursday night game. ESPN 2, 630. Can't wait to continue to watch this game after we get off of it. Morgan State Bears 2-3 on one on the road. And number four, North Carolina Central Eagles, they're looking to move back up the polls at 4-1, make their statement as they have their first game in MEAC. Uh, obviously, you see it in the background with Charles. Make sure you can sneak a peek at it. With that, let me go to you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup between Morgan State Bears and North Carolina Central Eagles? Yeah, I mean, I think the the question of the game is how, how can Morgan State can they control Davis Richard? I mean, he's a, a guy who's been getting it done uh, week in, week out with his uh, arm and his legs. I think he's the key to the game for North Carolina Central. And on the defensive side of the ball, can Central stop Morgan State's running game? Uh, they're running back. Uh, I believe he leads the MIAC in rushing thus far, over 500 yards rushing. So uh, the question is, can North Carolina Central stop Morgan State's running game, and can they put some points up? Uh, we haven't seen a MIAC team thus far uh, that can slow down North Carolina Central. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Oh, my, my, mine are the same thing. You, I mean, you got to look at number uh, tops in rushing, uh, 180 yards per game. That's North Carolina Central. Davis Richard is number one in the league. No, number two in the league in rushing, number two in passing. Um, so if they can stop that attack, I, I don't know if I see it because if you look at defense, you know, Morgan State's, you know, fluctuates between two and three throughout the year. So it'll be a tough stop for them. If they can control them, they have, they have a puncher's chance of winning this game. Yeah. Morgan State went three and out on their first drive. Obviously, I told you about North Carolina scoring a touchdown. They got the ball the second time, and they're driving. Um, they just got an unsportsmanlike penalty against Morgan State. So now the ball is going deeper into the red zone. So North Carolina Central is threatening to a score again. They're not careful. This game is going to be a blowout before it even gets started out of this fourth mm. quarter. That you know how serious North Carolina Central Eagles may be because this is a tough Morgan State team, but they're still building. Uh, Just to give you an update for those that are not able to watch, you have North Carolina Central first down on the 13-yard line for the Morgan State Bears. With that, let's get back into it. Major Division game, Slack game of the week. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mumford Stadium, Slack Western Division, Saturday, October 15th, 6 o'clock, ESPN Plus, number three, all four state Braves, three and two, two and oh, at number six, Southern Jaguars. 3-3, three 2-1, three, coming off a big victory against Prairie View, top 10 program, top 5 at that time. And then more, uh, Alcorn State getting a win over their rival, Mississippi Valley State. This is fascinating. This is unique because they're playing the Baton Rouge for the second year in a row. If you remember last year, because Alcorn did not play in the spring, they had to move a game to Baton Rouge, which is last year. So this is actually the normal schedule where it should have been playing in Baton Rouge for those that may not have recalled that. That's why this game is not in Loma. It is actually where it's supposed to be in the first place in Baton Rouge. Let me stick with you, uh, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup with the Braves and Southern? Rashawn McCray, which quarterback do you get for Southern? Do you get the yep. one that was electric last week against Prairie View, or do you get the one uh, that played against uh, Texas Southern? I do believe that this uh, Southern Jaguar team, they're gelling uh, at the right time. They're getting better week to week, uh, and you, you see them playing – in that manner. And fact of the matter is, their backs are up against the wall. They cannot afford one more loss over there in the Swag West. So for that reason alone, I think they're going to play with their hair on fire. So I'm going to go with the Jaguars on this one. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, you get North Carolina Central just scores again. That's why I pause. I'm going to go to you, which reminds me of the Southern game. Three of their first touchdowns were touchdowns on third down conversion which is something that Prairie View previously defense had been really good. This is a third and four uh, in the red zone, and North Carolina Central gets the payoff in terms of getting into the end zone instead of the Morgan Bears being able to make them force the least try a field goal. You saw that. So as Charles talks about McCray, the quarterback, which one's going to show up, you've seen the ability at least last game where they were very efficient on third down and not even just scoring, but the fact that you get touchdowns, getting seven instead of the three. 
What are your thoughts in terms of this top 10 matchup between Alcorn State and Southern? Can Alcorn make the move and make the statement that they are back in the business of getting to that championship game and winning the West? Or is Southern saying, no, we're back, we have Dooley, and we're ready to run, and we're ready to rise? I know it's early, but that's what's on the line for this Western Division matchup. What do you think, Mike? No, I, I can't disagree with any of you. I think I'm going to jump on the other side of the ball. Which Southern defense are we going to get? Is it that mm. Southern defense that allowed TSU to score 24 points? Or is it that one that's allowed, you know, Prairie View to come in and out at times or or that, you know, played against Prairie View, didn't allow anything in that second half? So which defense are we going to get? We've talked about Michelle McCray. Which one, which version of him are we going to get? Which version of their defense are, they, are we going to get as well? Um, I think their backs up against the wall. I think everybody knows it. They can't afford another loss in the West. I think that goes without being said. And then how motivated is Alcorn State? You know, they have key wins. They had a, a solid win against McNeese State earlier this year. So, uh, you, you know, Southern, you saw them starting to jail. But how, you know, how much is this Alcorn State team starting to jail as really? I don't think we really understand how much they're starting to put it together as well. Quickly, Mike, I'm going to stick with you because I want to do a little bit uh, in terms of a bonus SWAT game. Jackson State, number one uh, in the country, 5-0, and 3-0. They're on the road with the Cookman Wildcats, 1-4, 1-1. and This is on ESPN, 3 o'clock game. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Can Bethune Cookman find a way to keep it close, or will Jackson just con- continue to kind of roll to what they want to see uh, the way they want the season to end this year? I, unfortunately, I, I wish I could even say that this is going to be, I, I you know, it's 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 in Jacksonville, Florida. So there's there's some degree of home cooking there, but I, I think Jackson State comes comes in, takes care of business. The only thing I could say is this a watch? Is this a watch game? Maybe they get caught looking ahead to to Campbell and Southern University coming up. But I, I you know, with Bethune rate being ranked second to last in defense. I don't see them being able to be able to stop Jackson State at all, um, no matter who's on the field. Um, Bethune may fight, but I, I think Jackson State will kind of get their offense going. They may sleep in the first half or whatever, or maybe they're overlooking because they got Campbell and Southern coming up. But I, I see Jackson State kind of pulling this one out convincingly. Charles, is the proverbial trap game, trap game or with Jackson State – continue just to march and get things done in terms of their ultimate goal this year? No, I don't think it's a trap game because uh, this team is laser focused, I think, on the task at hand. And they take they do a really, really good job. I mentioned this on the pregame show the other night. They do a really, really good job of uh, playing week to week and staying on task. And, and then one of the things I often marvel at is the in-game adjustments that this coaching staff makes uh, during the course of the game. And the, the principles never change. Stop the run, make a team one-dimensional, make them throw the ball. And I think that's something they want to uh, make uh, Jalen Jones do it in terms of throwing the ball and kind of creating some mistakes from there. But one thing to watch uh, is whether this team starts off slow again. Because what we've seen now over the past few games is – uh, everybody gets up for Jackson State, and they yeah. normally hit a switch or they hit a gear somewhere uh, midway second quarter going into the third quarter, and you don't want to continue to be in that sort of pattern, but uh, we'll see if they come out uh, fast in this one. Yeah, that's what Keith I said. No, that, that's, the only, that's the only thing to watch out. Will Jackson State be a little sleepy in the first half, and then they hit that switch? Um, that's I mean, but other than that, I think Jackson State continues victorious. Mike Jones just said, Come on, Mike. It's all corn. I thought I did say all corn, just like all many. <laughs> like, yep, better get it right. They're going to get you. With that, a uh, big kickoff return by Keith Jenkins Jr. Uh, gets it inside the central 30, uh, a kickoff return for over 70 yards on the edge of the goal line. You're talking about a big time need to play, but uh, Morgan State gets a flag to kind of back them up. So we'll see if they can find a way to get in there and make his go. With this, the last matchup we have is a MEAC bonus game, Delaware State and Norfolk State. Norfolk State got the big win. That's number five, Delaware State Hornets, three and two. On the road at Norfolk State Spartans. I believe the Hornets are pretty serious in terms of Delaware State. But Norfolk State found a way to get off the mat. They're one and oh. This is a fascinating game to keep your eyes on in terms of your Charles and you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this North Virginia 
William Dick Price Stadium. Yeah. It is homecoming. Um, and Norfolk just ruined somebody's homecoming. So they'll be aware. And Delaware State go in there and, and do what Norfolk did to Morgan. What do you yeah, think? This, this is the prove it to me game for Delaware State because normally this is where their fall off happens, somewhere in October. Uh, they, they come out halfway decent and they've done it again this year. And this is where, you know, games like this, when you get a one in five team uh, on their homecoming, that they can't find a way to get over the hump. Uh, so for, for that reason, I got to go with Norfolk State to protect uh, the green and gold, if you will, at home there. Uh, I look for Norfolk State to get the W. Update. We might have us a game here. Morgan State gets a touchdown pass play. Uh, they retreated now up the seam on the third side, on the left side, if you would, as they get a 30-plus yard touchdown, if you would, from Crawley to get in there and get it done. Big time plays by a Morgan State going for a point extra. Let me get your thoughts on this matchup, Mike, in terms of Delaware State and Norfolk State. Uh, the kick extra point is good, so it's 14-7, North Carolina Central over Morgan State with 541 left in the first quarter. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, normally, <clears throat> normally this game, this game is going to be a lot closer than a lot of folks think. You know, Norfolk State's averaging 13.5 points per game. Um, Delaware State's averaging 21 points per game. I, I would expect Norfolk State to protect home, but it's not going to be as close as we think it is. I think mm. I give them home field advantage, homecoming to protect home turf, but it, I don't think Delaware State has shown some improvement as of late. So I look for a close matchup with Del Norfolk State pulling it out. Shout out to those listeners out there, Noel Price, Anthony Johnson, uh, Michael Lee, A.D. Drew, Thurman Waters, Mary Allen, um, getting it all in here, Clay, K. Creighton, G. Boom Holly, Thomas Einstein, Maddox, uh, Joel Jackson, appreciate you, Chuck Hunt, Ricky Burton, much love, Carol Keelum, Eric Evans, appreciate y'all jumping in here to the lab, Donald Crawford, Terry Knighton, uh, Emma Price, uh, William E. Davis, Troy Lamont Coleman is in the house, as always, appreciate all the support, Anthony Johnson, Edwin D. Moore, Wendell Davis, as brother Davis, LaShawn Harris. Who else we got in here before we close out? Christopher White, I see you. Kate Johnson, appreciate you all giving us much love. Matthew Bradford, uh, in terms of getting it done in so many different ways. Wendy Jenkins Bishop, I see you. I see who else we got in here as we come to the close. Michael D. Moore, uh, getting it done. Shannon Ed Edgerson, I'm sorry. Who else we have in here? Before we go to close, with that being said, Jerome G. Sutton, Herman Bolden, thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Kavil, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Deal's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. We look forward to discussing the latest news in the lab. Check us out on Sunday morning. We'll be here to discuss some of these big games, make sure you check out BCSN uh, as we're going to be showing that top five matchup in the SIC with all many and uh, Benedict to get it done. So we're interested in that. We'll still make sure we watch out what's going on in the CIAA. With that being said, Inside Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube on Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Pretty big. Continue to move forward. We'll talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Mike? Lecture. Dismiss. <laughs>
Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lock. Yeah. And who the ball? Ball, 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 ball,